Have you ever stopped to think about the language of your tears? When you cry, is it in your native tongue? Or do your tears speak a universal language beyond words? Do our emotions, memories, or even the languages we've learned shape how we cry? And here's a deeper question. How long can a person truly cry before the body or mind gives out? These questions might seem simple, but they reveal profound truths about who we are, how we feel, and how deeply we're connected as humans. Let's dive into the science, the mystery, and the untold stories of our tears. First, let's ask the big question. What language do we cry in? Crying is universal, an instinct shared by every human, no matter where they're from or what language they speak. A baby's first cry is understood across the globe, and the tears of joy, sorrow, or relief connect us as humans in a way that words simply cannot. But does this mean crying is beyond language? Not entirely. For many of us, the thoughts we have while crying reflect the language we think in. A bilingual person might cry while their inner dialogue switches between languages depending on the situation. It's fascinating, isn't it? Now let's zoom into the biology. Crying is powered by our lacrimal glands, tiny structures above our eyes that produce tears. These glands don't care about what language you speak. They respond to raw emotions, whether it's heartbreak, joy, or even the irritation from cutting onions. But here's the twist. These glands have limits. You can't cry endlessly, no matter how deep your sorrow is. The body eventually steps in to regulate the process. So how long can we actually cry? Most crying sessions last between 10 to 30 minutes. In extreme emotional states, it might stretch to an hour or two. But crying continuously for days? Scientifically, that's impossible. Our eyes dry out, our muscles tire, and eventually, the brain releases calming hormones like oxytocin to bring us back to balance. Even in the deepest grief, there's a moment when the body says, enough. You've probably heard stories of people crying for years or even going blind from crying. But here's the truth. These tales are more symbolic than scientific. While crying can cause temporary redness or irritation, it won't make you blind. What these stories highlight is the emotional weight of loss, not the physical reality of crying. Here's another intriguing question. Can we cry without thinking in words? The answer is absolutely. Crying is deeply instinctive. Think about a baby. They cry to communicate without knowing a single word. Similarly, when adults cry, especially in moments of overwhelming grief, it's often beyond conscious thought. These tears come from a place deeper than language, pure emotion. But why can't we cry forever? Beyond biology, there's a psychological reason. Crying helps us process emotions, but after a certain point, the mind reaches a state of emotional exhaustion. We enter a phase of quiet sadness or numbness, a natural defense mechanism to protect ourselves from being overwhelmed. And what about those who say they've cried for years? While it might feel like endless crying, what they're describing is a cycle of intense grief interspersed with quieter moments. This is how humans cope with profound loss. Our bodies simply can't sustain continuous crying. In stories and culture though, crying often symbolizes the depth of human sorrow. Tales of crying oneself blind or shedding tears endlessly are metaphors for the emotional storms we endure. So what language do we cry in? The truth is, while crying itself is universal, the thoughts accompanying our tears often reflect the languages we hold closest to our hearts. And how long can we cry? Not forever. Our tears may stop, but the meaning behind them often lingers, reminding us of our shared humanity. If you enjoyed this exploration of the language and limits of tears, don't forget to follow Fact Up for more thought-provoking content. And tell us, what's your most memorable experience with crying? Let's share and connect in the comments below.